What's going on everybody? This is Brandon down here at Snake River Fly. I got another fly tying tutorial for you today. Uh, we're going uh, down the balance leech uh, rabbit hole yet again. Um, pattern uh, that's based off of uh, Brian Chan's uh, Ruby Leech. If you haven't looked into Chan's stuff, uh, dude's a still water wizard. And the balance leech thing is, uh, you know, went from pretty much a still water lake, um, you know, bug to being very serviceable on like, you know, a lot of our, our rivers out here in the West, bigger stuff like that, similar to like the snake, you know, balance leeches reign supreme. So um, nothing, you know, super crazy new, just some new colorways and stuff that we found that work really, really well for our area. Uh, this is the bug here. We're gonna be using our Red's Olive uh, Club Dub. Um, it's just got a really nice kind of perch bait fish olive with uh, some some golds reds some other you know like peacock kind of flashes blended through it and it is uh, just a touch softer uh, material versus some of the other seal substitutes that are out there so we're going to go ahead and jump into this guy uh, we got a number eight uh, this is 60 degree from matsu either the j1 or the j2 are going to be uh, your guy uh, got an orange six out thread whatever your flavor we're always going to be rocking that semper fly though so we'll start that thread base there i got a four millimeter um they can be slotted or non uh copper bead and then we're grabbing one of these uh large ruby red beads uh that we just recently listed got that on my pin it's a little short on this one we're going to super glue the crap out of it so we're not going to worry about it but you can find some longer pins that are out there so we're going to set that right there on the the top just like any good old fashioned balance leech. And we're gonna start locking that in. Come in with some fancy super glue. And then finish that up. That should hold that bad boy in place. But knowing me, I'm probably just gonna snag it on a rock and lose it anyways, like third cast. So advance our thread back back of the hook there right at the bend and then we're going to take some marabou olive brown olive dark olive you know any of those will work i prefer either the olive or the brown olive i got the brown olive here kind of clean this stem up i'm going to pull just one side of this off you know maximizing our material that way we can get two flies out of that one i'm going to take that nice clump like so we're going to take you know a rough length and a quarter hang that off the back couple securing wraps and then where the pin bump ends here we're going to cut our marabou flush up against that that way we have a nice smooth underbody we don't have anything weird and lumpy because trout know so we'll clean that up now i do like adding a little bit of flash to this back end whether it's crystal flash you know, um, or whatever your favorite, Crelex, whatever it may be. Um, of course, we're gonna rock some crinkles on in the UV gold here. That crimped flash definitely grabs and refracts light um, a little bit better than some of the straight flashes that are out there. Kind of gets that thing to glow. So I'm gonna tie that uh, one. I've got a really small clump, tying it in closest to me. A few wraps, and then I'm gonna fold the excess over the top and to cover up the other side. This long stuff here, we're just gonna pinch at the end of the tail, pull that off so everything lines up. Use your fancy rotary vise to make sure that you are even. Okay, so we're gonna make a dubbing loop now towards the back. Wrap that up right to the base of the tail and then advance our thread right behind our ruby bead here. Grab your favorite dubbing tool, spinner that hang for just a second and then I'm gonna grab some of our Red's Olive uh, Club Dub. I'm gonna take a chunk of that and then just like any material like this you're gonna take it and you're gonna preen it, stack it, make it look nice and pretty until everything's kind of nice and evened up there. We're gonna open up our dubbing loop. I'm gonna stack that in there 50-50 like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and kind of spread that dubbing out a little bit. That way it's not too chunky in one spot and we get a nice even distribution when we spin this. It makes for a cleaner looking fly. And the old adage, a little dubbing goes a long way. And this is probably way too much, but just so I don't mess up on camera, we're gonna keep it like so. 
So we got that guy there. We're gonna go ahead and spin that up now. Come in with a brush, kind of pick that out, get most of those trapped fibers released. So, so we got this nice little rope here and we'll go ahead and we're going to take those fibers and kind of pull them one direction not the not the boy band and we're going to homer this up the shank with this one you know play with your 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 thread color for your base um so i don't want to you can make these touching wraps all the way up through sometimes it'll kind of overwhelm it and you'll get a really really bushy body so i'm kind of I'm not touching, but I am. Um, in a sense, you can see that some of my, my thread base is kind of bleeding through it here a little bit. When you brush this out, you know, once it's all said and done, it's gonna give you some really full coverage. But if you play with your, you know, the colors underneath, like UVs, different things, so like this orange, sometimes when it gets wet, you'll kind of get that cool glow um, from under there. So we'll bring that right up behind our ruby bead here. Come in capturing wraps behind pull that tight one or two in front and we can trim out our excess off of our loop pull some of these fibers back a few more wraps just to make sure everything's locked into place come in with our fancy whip finisher I'm gonna give it a couple there right behind the ruby bead tighten that down cut that sucker out I'm not going to use the super glue because I know I'll mess it up, but imagine like sweet head cement in there and everything's happy. Um, so we'll go, we'll go ahead and we're going to brush this sucker out now. I like to brush all of the fibers forward and then bringing them back. You get this really nice tapered veiled body that bleeds in really nice that tail and everything there. So that is just a rendition of Brian Chan's Ruby Leech. Uh, this one's balanced. I know that he does it in both ways, but just in this color scheme that seems to work really well on the snake and some of our you know local reservoirs that we have. So uh, definitely one that I would tie up and give a whirl. If you haven't subscribed or hit the like button, anything like that, we would greatly appreciate it. It helps us out a ton. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, happy fishing.